Well, good morning. This was not the plan <laughs> for me to be recording today. But, you know, we can have good plans, as you've heard me say many times. But God can have a better plan. So, right now, I'm sitting actually in my bedroom recording today. I've got my Texas Padre Island sweatshirt on. It's not really church attire. But it's it's winter Texas attire, and it's wishful thinking that I could be down at the beach today. So, uh, but I'm thankful that I'm able to talk to you. As most of you know, if you're watching, I'm actually home with COVID. So, um, it all hit me with a bang last Sunday morning. Thank God, before church and not during or after. Didn't you know? Didn't really be able to contaminate people, expose people. But I've had a pretty good week, um, not as good today, but I felt like I wanted to go ahead and just say some things to you. Um, things have been on my mind, and some of this I was going to teach last Sunday before I got sick. So we'll see how this goes, but I realized that even this week, while I've been able to have a, some time to think, and um, hopefully I'm going to get through this, my breathing's not really great. But I've I've had a, a pretty mild case, so I'm not complaining. But the last time I talked, the last time I taught, um, was I talked about from the top down. That God is doing some things from top down. And so when things happen that you don't understand, that it just kind of blows your plans out of water, it's really good to remember <laughs> that God is still in control. God is still sovereign. And, you know, my whole life right now, I had plans to be there with my daughter. We've been planning this thing. You know, she's a planner. And so how to take care of the kids homeschooling. And boy, she has everything laid out. She's got people bringing meals and all that kind of stuff. But mama was going to be there to help do uh, the mama things and help take care of her and the grandkids. And I was really looking forward to taking off and doing that. And right before this all happened, uh, she got COVID and then it went through the whole family. Her surgery was put off. Finally, she's had the surgery, and then the day I was going down there, if their quarantine ended, I got COVID. So here we are, and still hadn't got to do that. So what do we do when life doesn't look like we think it's supposed to look? I, I've been thinking about this, and um, you know, if you watch a television series, you've got your favorite series. You know, each episode has got its story, right? You can do a standalone, if standalone message, or or watch a show. If you're one of those old time, you know, long going uh, Law and Order, you know, to say that every episode of Law and Order has its own story, but there's always a storyline underneath. So you really don't know what's been happening with the with the actors if you've not been watching it. So there is an underlying storyline that's already planned, that's taken them somewhere, but each episode stands alone. I feel like that's what's been happening with me and my messages, that each message is a standalone message. You can watch it and get something out of it. But I look back and I see that this has been, there's an underlying taken us somewhere that has nothing to do with us. God's sovereignty is still, there's an underlying that what he has said is going to happen is going to happen. There is a big picture. There's a plan that's been there before the foundation of the earth. And so what, what I also see, though, in the middle of this is something we still have what we call free will. And I can't get into all those deep things, which I love to study. But each one of us, so we're not a robot that we have to have a free will so there's relationship. So I feel like this each episode of life we're going through, it's that relationship. There's there's people that have something to do in that episode and, and that's where we choose. But God's underlying when it comes down to humanity and what he came to do is going to be done with or without us. The, the question is, is do we want to be a part of it? I talked to a young man uh, took a call this week that's been in prison for 23 years and um, went in at 18 years old, one of our, when I called my boys. But he brought to my attention a scripture. I don't remember what he was even telling me. But he said he remembered the scripture being at the church that we were at then. Uh, and he was trying to find it and he found it. And it was where Isaiah, and he said, you know, uh, 
send me, Lord. Here am I. Because the Lord said, who, who will I send? Who will I send to go give this message? He said, here I am. Send, send me. And all these years, even after doing a terrible crime and going to prison for it, he's been sitting in prison all those years. He remembered that. He remembered saying, here I am. Send me. And he hasn't forgotten it. And so here he is trying to do the work of the Lord inside the prison. Uh, that's not what life I thought was going to look like for this kid. But he remembered this. And I see and we were talking about this underlying thing. He said, I know my choices got me here. God didn't put me here. But I still remember. Send me. And he goes, I'm, gonna, I'm doing that, Chaplain Weeby. I'm doing that. I'm trying to do it now the best of my ability inside here. Well, see, the, he had a will. It's never God's will for us to do things to harm other people. But God's sovereignty, that heart that said, send me. <laughs> he said, I don't know what I'd do if I didn't have God in here. Yeah. We make a lot of choices. But then the beautiful part is God never leaves us. And he will clean up our messes. Um, it, it doesn't erode his plan. He's right there. He'll pick up. I think I need to remind you of that. There's some things going on in our world that doesn't look like we thought it was going to look. But we've been warned. We're talking about prophetic warning. Um, and it was getting us ready to know how to react. Realize that... All during 19, 2019, our body was worn and given all these different dreams and visions and things and not just come out of our body, but other bodies that we come in contact with that we'd post about the tsunami. That there was going to be the tsunami coming. We were told what was going to happen, that there was going to be like a tsunami that was going to just upheave everything. It was going to suck out and come back in. We, we saw different scenarios of that, how the pillars were moving around or like there was things that were debris was being uh, sucked out to see. There was things that were standing. You could see what was solid. There was things that, that when the water drew back, the underlying dwellers, the, 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 the things down there that were revealed. And then we had the message, not only the re ugly was revealed, but then treasure that had been sunken was revealed. And so we've gotten all these messages and we're, we were we were told there was going to be a tsunami. I don't know why we're surprised. People are surprised. It's like, what? what is that? What's happening? Oh my God, the devil's winning. The devil ain't winning. Run, devil ain't running nothing but his mouth. That's not changed. We have, we have COVID. Who would have thought that it'd be COVID? I'm, COVID's not just an American thing. COVID is world. World. It's affected millions of people and hundreds of thousands of people have died, lost their lives to this it's still not over we're still in the middle of it i'm suffering it today and so but i'm 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 not distraught i still have to know that in the middle of this god's not lost any power and that if i will surrender this to him i he already warned us he told us not only what was going to happen but then all during 20 he was telling us why it was happening you realize that he told us, he used the, the message. You remember my message, prescribed fire? That it's prescribed, it's for a purpose. It has a lot of good reasons and purposes for it. Do you remember when Pastor Gary, the Lord told him, I'm removing the dross from my people? He didn't say, if you want me to, if the pastor wants to do it or straighten up. No, he said, I'm doing it. It's top down. I'm, I'm sending a tsunami. There's a purpose. And I'm going to tell you why. And then he equates it with a fire, a refining fire, a revealing fire. Fire not only a remove, brings stuff to the top that you can remove the dross, but it reveals the dross and also reveals him in the fire. It's seeing him more clearly. Fire brings light. So we understood. We were taught all these things. I realize that this has been an underlying story. I didn't plan it. I didn't set out to do a series on this. I have not done it. I have stumbled my way into each week's message. And I look back and see that God has been in the middle of every bit of this. It has been line upon line, precept upon precept. We were told what was going to happen. Then we were told why it was going to happen. 
over and over through all the fire, all the, the soil messages, the seed messages, all of those messages in 2020, we were being told in the middle of this, hold on, this is for your good. It's going to work out for good. It may look yucky. It's going to get messy. It's going to uh, hurt like Hades. Fire is not fun. You had to be reduced to ashes, but there was still going to be beauty in the ashes. And whatever he revealed, he was going to heal. We were told, we were told why. Now, starting this year, we've been told, in the middle of all this, you also, it's, it's the how. It's the how. When we were seeing the tsunami, the tsunami uh, visions and stuff, I, I remember a sister, I think it was Sister Jenny, one night at, on Wednesday night, and she just said, I remember this part of it. There was a lot to it, but in a lot of, and these are all kind of saying the same thing, a lot of them, but she was riding this way. The wave was brought, brought her up. We were told to, to rest and relax and let float, to let, to quit treading water. The Lord told Gary, tell Pam, quit treading water. Just relax and float. Let it carry her. That's scary. But anyway, Sister Jenny saw herself, but when she was riding the wave, she was able, she was positioned to reach down and grab people that were going by. She was lifting people up because there was a positioning. This is not just a fire. It's not just a, a tsunami. It is a repositioning. It's bringing the church to a purification and a place, but also positioning the church. If we will realize, if we will trust him, we will be above and not beneath. I'm going to tell you, it's wearing me out. And not just me. I've talked to other pastors. Wearing us out. Trying to keep our people above and not beneath. Right now to keep people from getting sucked into the fear of the disease or the uh, disappointment or fear of, of the election. It didn't maybe didn't look like they thought it should look. And now they're fearful for America. Oh, if I watch the news, I get fearful for America, but I can't stay there. I cannot get sucked into that because it, it's no I'm no position to help anybody. I'm no position. And so it's so difficult to keep our people up right now to go, just get above it, get above it, turn the news off. You know, we're not sticking our head in the sand. No, we're very aware. But this is the time you've got to get, like, like the last message, above and not beneath. You've got to see from top down. You've got to get above the clouds, above what that seeing through a glass darkly and get the eagle eye view so you can see what's really happening from the top down. So these are the messages we've been getting. The Lord told me, what did, what did he say? Let me just say, just like, lately. Let's just say this lately. What's, what, what have we heard? We heard that he's, he said, I'm repositioning. I'm, I'm uh, restoring the order. So he said, I'm restoring the order of my service, of God's service. What is service? It's ministry. It's ministry. Ministry and service, the same thing. You're ministering to people. You're serving people. He's bringing us back to reminding us, now, what are we supposed to be doing? He's bringing order back to say, let's get in order, church. It's time to get this. Just quit trying to sit around, work on ourselves. And let's just get this, get some marching orders here from the top down. Let's find out what father's saying, not what the news is saying, not what politics saying, not what, the, what, whatever. I'll, no, what is the Lord saying? Let's walk in the spirit because I'm getting some order because there's service to be done. I need you to be being Jesus to the world. This is our finest hour. It can be our finest hour. And so he said, I'm restoring some order. So the, what did you start teaching on? First of all, Brother James taught the last message of the year on hope. What do you expect? Let's, where's our hope at? Let's, where are we looking at? And I come in and talked about the immediately started talking to me about the priesthood. We're kings and priests. It's positioning. I need to know what I'm going to do now. What does a priest do? What does a king do? Well, I taught a long time on the kingdom and the kingship, but now he's bringing us into the priesthood. He's bringing us to what that means. And what did he tell me? He said, he reminded me what he told me back in 2017. He said, that you go down to go up. It's time to go on your knees. It's time to worship. It's time to get on your knees. It's time to get in prayer. A positioning of prayer. The positioning now is on your face. That's where we are. 
And you'll be on your face. Before you know it, you'll be on your feet leaping and jumping uh, with, with praise and all that. But it starts on your face. You humble yourself, you'll be exalted. Oh, this is so hard because of our people that's, and we're such a, a, a church of music and singing and, and, and what we called worship. Well, we, it's praise. It's wonderful and great and will always be that. But right now he's shifted a pillar of the church into prayer. It's a position of prayer. This is what Father's saying. There's people like, oh my gosh, what is Christian Gnother going to do? It's been our praise team that's brought people. Well, if, if that's the truth, we're in trouble. Oh, it's been a wonderful drawing, and I hope it'll continue doing that. But right now, Father's saying what we need. And somebody told me yesterday or the day before, they said, when we came to Christian Gather, we were so drawn to the to the praise time. They said, but now I would give it, but I would give all that up. No, the, we are. Don't take me wrong. We're not giving that up. We said, just to be able to come in that church and feel the presence I feel now. When I come in there, there's just some music playing, but people on their faces together when God father says something we need to pay attention well I look back and I'm seeing as we look around everything we were told about a tsunami a fire these different things you need to get in order you need to go well it's not it, it's COVID there's election there's a social writing the things that we never ever thought was going to happen We've been seeing it happen. This is not an accident. And we've been prepared for it. But as we see these things in the natural, we've got to remember that we've got to go higher. We've got to go into what Paul called that third heaven. you got to see beyond what we can just see in the sky or what we can see in our mind, uh, in our, our, our soul realm, but get it in the spirit. And so one of the things that I taught about um, I guess, I, I don't know if it's the end of the year or the first of the year, but I talked about two tables. I talked about that we've been seated. We have an open invitation to be able to sit at two tables. This is this whole uh, order thing that's been going on. As he's been showing us in the natural, he's also showing us in the spiritual. There's, we've been prepared for this, and we have a place to go. We not only, first of all, there's the table of the family, right? We all have an invitation. It's an open invitation to come and, and sit at that table where all of our needs, that we have a place. We're part of family. We're not doing this thing alone. Even though sometimes we feel isolated, like today, we're not having a regular gathering because of the ice and the, you know, the things that's going on. And uh, we're not having a regular service gathering. But the truth is, God has already been letting us know, you have a place at the table. I'm setting things in order. Not only you have a place at the table of the family, but you have a place at the table of authority. That is that place where you come, like I used to sit when I was a chaplain on Monday mornings with the superintendent and make decisions for the campus. Because of my position, it's that kings and priests. We are not only family, priests serving our family, but we're also kings making decisions that we can speak into people's lives that need us right now. He's been, he's reminding us of that. But I've, I've, I don't know if I've talked on Sunday about it or, or one of my deals, but I, the message keeps coming back to me. The thing is, he said he has seated us together. Uh, oh, okay. It's in Ephesians 6 and uh, 2 and 6. For he has raised us up together and made us sit together, together twice, in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He's already done this. We're already there. We have just, the church, I think, itself has forgotten that we're kings and priests. We've forgotten what God, Christ has already done for us. He has raised us up together, and he has made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. It's only in Christ can we see from that perspective. And so I'm imagining myself, I've been doing this on a daily basis, going, okay, I'm imagining, I'm, okay, where's that spirit me? There's a part of me that's above me. It's above my flesh what i can see hear smell taste and touch it's beyond the news it's beyond even the second level is my brain what i want to imagine what i want to think uh that's the logic that's me what i think supposed to happen i've got to go a third level that's the face down level that's where i'm in the holy place where i'm like okay lord what do you what do you say i see what you are doing and he says in first corinthians 12 and 18 god has set the members every one of them in the body as it's pleased him you see he's done his part 
This is from the top down. And I'm going to give you a prophetic word that Lord tell Gary, I put here, uh, 2521. Uh, I, I, all of a sudden, Gary just said, well, I heard, I heard, he was weird, but I heard the, just in my mind, he said, I did my part. What are you going to do? Oh, I love it when he asked a question. It's what it makes me think. He said, I've done my part. He's just like that. That's the tone of voice. I've done my part. What are you going to do? You see, I believe that's the question today. He's done his part. What are we going to do? He's already seated us with Christ. He's already done the work. He's already said, you're there. If you'll stop and you'll steal your mind, be still. Just stop your thoughts. Stop your mouth. Stop what you're thinking and be still and know I'm God. Stop and acknowledge me in all of your ways. I've done my part. What are you going to do? I've told you guys was a tsunami coming. What are you going to do? I've told you there was fires coming. What are you going to do? Are you going to sit and gripe and moan and, oh, my God, this didn't happen. This is the devil's money. What are you going to do? Are you going to really put in action the things I've been teaching you? If you've been a part of the ministry, you know I've been teaching, preparing for this. The Lord has been preparing this, and it's the underlying storyline that the glory of God will fill the earth. He is going to do this with or without us. What are you going to do? And so I started thinking about this, this whole thing about being seated. It's interesting. Um, and there's a scripture as, as, that I, I don't rant onto this and it, boy, it grabbed my attention. It's in Isaiah 52, which is a very famous uh, passage, but I hadn't really paid attention to this part. It said, awake, awake and put on your strength, O Zion, put on your beautiful garments now, we know Zion was a picture of the church today. In the Old Testament, they had a natural Zion, natural, that was the hill that was in Jerusalem, the highest place. But he said, put on your beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city, uh, for thenceforth there are no more coming to thee, the uncircumcised and unclean. In other words, it's a position changing. Something just happened. You get up and get dressed. Arise, arise. Put your garments on. Get dressed up. Number verse two, shake thyself from the dust. Arise and sit down. That's weird. Isaiah 52, 2. Arise, shake thyself from the dust. Arise and sit down. O Jerusalem, loose yourself from the bounds, uh, bounds of your neck. O beautiful captive Zion. Arise and sit down. Well, that sounds weird. First of all, he says, shake yourself. From the dust. Well, when I hear dust, I hear humanity. I hear flesh, dust to dust, right? It's the body. It's humanity. The dust always represents the human part of us, the beast part of us that, that will be corrupt and go to back to the dust just like our, our pets will, okay? So he says, or shake yourself from the dust. And I looked up that word shake for whatever reason, and it had the connotation, it says, of a lion that shakes its mane gets up and shakes and man shakes the dust off this is what i believe he's telling us rise shake yourself from the dust and we've had other prophetic words about dust it's been coming to us he said arise and then sit down wow this is really jumped out at me and then when i saw that word about shaking like a lion that was in, that's in the original, the, the Hebrew, it said like a lion. Well, immediately I thought of a scripture and we quote it a lot about the line of the tribe of Judah. Okay, we hear that a lot. So I just looked it up. Okay, where's that at? I thought it was a bunch of places. I found there's only one place that that phrase is actually in the Bible and it's Revelations. And it was interesting. I just want to throw this in there out there for you because I think God is he's speaking something prophetic to us. He's saying, you're going to take your position. What is the lion? It's the it's the king of, of the jungle. Uh, it's that where well, he used that lion as its power. Um, it is is going out in, in your power and your authority. And he said, shake yourself. And he said, well, let's go to this where it says lion tribe of Judah. Um, oh, I think I have it here. I wasn't even going to talk about this, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. It's in Revelation. It's interesting. Uh, the, the fifth chapter. Uh, first of all, just a little. It's talking about, he said, I wept much. There was no man found worthy that opened a book. And uh, so, but then the elders come to me and said, weep not. Stop crying. There's the answer. Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the book and loose the seven seals. Okay. The lion of the tribe of Judah. 
and the root of David. It's the same thing. This root of David. It's going back to the Old Testament. The Jews understood this kind of stuff when John was getting this revelation, right, telling them about it. He said, and so he goes, I turned around and looked to see what this, this lion looked like. I looked to see this root of David, this, this lion, tribe of Judah. And I behold in the midst of the throne, in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as though it had been slain. This tribe of, line of tribe of Judah, this word that take the book, now is a, li- a lamb. That's not just any lamb, but a lamb that's been slain. And he said he, he, t- he came and took the book out of the right hand of him to sit on the throne. And we take in the book, the four beasts, the 24 elders, fell down before the lamb. Fell down. They worshipped him. They fell in submission. They fell in honor. Every one of them having harps. Those are instruments, musical instruments. And golden vials full of the odors, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and open the seals. For you have re- you were slain and you redeemed us by your own blood out of every kingdom, tongue, people, and nation. And you made us unto our God kings and priests. And we shall reign on the earth. Wow. This, <laughs> from its arise and sit down business, Shaking your rain, I, 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 and I looked it up in the Hebrew, and it said about a lion, and I, then it takes me to the lion of the tribe of Judah, and then I get to the lion of the tribe of Judah, and then I stood, the lion actually turned into a lamb now. The lion in the old was now the lamb of the new. And then I see, I see words about they fell down. I've been teaching about worship, what the difference in worship and praise is. And then all of a sudden, they, they've, they've got the instruments, but then they had vials full of oh, the prayers of the saints. I've been teaching about the prayers of the saints is what the priests brought in. And he said, he did all this for why? And they sung a new song, said, you're worthy. And he says, because you have made unto our God, us kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. This whole thing, I'm like, how did I get there? Well, the Holy Spirit is leading me to something. See, we want to be a lion. We want to go roar. Let's go out there and let's go get the tribe of Judah. The tribe of Judah, the lion of the tribe, and Judah and praise this instrument. They had harps and they sang here. And the miss, which would be praise, Judah's praise. It's, that's what it means, or part of that word was. But all of this praise was mixed with the prayers. And they fell down into worship. Because why? The lamb had come. The lamb was no longer lying. Now he was standing there like a, 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 a lion. He was like a lamb led to the slaughter, the Bible says. But he came to make us kings and priests. You see, I realize as Christ stood in Pilate's hall, he stood there and took the, the crap. The, whatever. <laughs> the abuse. Oh. But he did it because he was going to be slain. He had a purpose. It didn't look pretty. He looked weak. He looked defeated. He looked like a loser. But he was going to allow that to happen because... He was going to rise and say, Lo, all power in heaven and earth is given to me. Not only am I a king, but I'm the king of kings. I'm not just a priest, but I'm the high priest. That I'm going to go in once and for all. Once and for all, I'm going to have offer, offer sacrifices to them. For them. He had a plan. It doesn't look like we think. Sometimes it looks like we're losing when we're really winning. I think America, whatever is going on, is exactly what God has planned. I'm telling you, it's always persecution that brings people to revival. The new church, they wouldn't have been selling everything they had and giving to the poor. They were doing that because they were being persecuted. They were being, they were being killed. They have been put in lines. They were hiding together. They had to sell everything. They were losing it anyway. They were hiding behind closed doors. They were taking care of one another. They were running for their lives and the gospel was spread with them. People's freaking out because America, we're afraid we're going to lose our 401 high high that we've been having. We've liked the success in the financial thing. We've liked part of the people have agreed with what's happening and part of them hasn't. The truth is, why are we going to get so bogged down when he already told us, I'm going to work it for good. 
and it'll work for my good if I will be a participant. He said, I've done what I'm going to do. What are you going to do about it? What are you going to do? I've done my part. I've already become the lamb slain. I've already done these things. He says, now what I need you to do is do what I did. You need to rise up, shake yourself, and then get over there and sit in with Christ in heavenly places. Christ went down before he went up. He stood up in Pilate's taught, stood up for what was right, and allowed to take the junk. And because he was going to be slain, and then he was going to rise and he was going to have all power in heaven and earth. He knew what had to happen. Do you know what has to happen? Sometimes we have to look like a lamb slain. It's called meekness. But it's not weakness. No, it's power and control for a greater purpose. Who are we? He said if you're the, the servant of all. The greatest would be the servant of all. That's where you fall down before him and say, whatever it is you want, that's what I'll do. Just like this young man had said years ago, here I am, Lord, send me. And even through his failures and even through the stuff that's happened, he's now, he's sitting there learning how to be seated with Christ in heavenly places to see this from, a, from another place. And it reminded me of Exodus 19, 3 and 6. Uh, three through 6. He said, Moses went up to God and the Lord called him out of the mountain saying, uh, this is what I need you to say to the children of Israel. You have seen what I've done to the, the Egyptians and how I bore you up on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. You've already seen what I've done, people. Don't you remember what I've already done? I, I, you saw what I did to the Egyptians. You saw what I did to your enemies. I saw how I, I bore you up and I took you through the waters and I brought you to myself. So now, if you'll obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant... You'll be a particular treasure for me. That word treasure means closely kept. Special. And to me above all people. For all the earth is mine. I love all people. That Everybody's my people. But I've got a call on you, Israel. There's a certain purpose, church. I love the world. And I need you to be the Israel. I need you to be the example. So people go, oh, we want to serve the Lord of the Israelites. We want to serve the Lord of Pam and Gary. He said, you will be above all the people of the earth. He goes, you'll be a peculiar treasure. And you shall be unto me. And this is back in Exodus, the Old Testament. A kingdom of priests and a holy nation. You will be those kings. It won't just be one priest or one king. You'll be unto me a nation. It was the plan of God from the beginning for us to be a nation, a priest. Not just have one priest, one pastor, one king. No, he was to be the king. Do you realize Jesus came and restored order? The order that the Israelites blew? He was their king, but they got to the place. They got their eyes on man. They got their eyes on the, the, the priests of the day that was really messing up. They were they was taking bribes. Uh, they were not doing the right thing. But they got to looking at man and said, well, let's just forget people. They're so fallible. We don't want, we don't want those sons of Eli. We don't want sons of, uh, of these, these, these priests because they're, they're not good people. So they give us a natural king. We want to be like the nations of the earth. And he's like, I am your king. No, we want a king that we can see. We want this president. We want. We think we know what we need. We think what America needs. We think what. So he's like, I'm your king. But you know what he did? It's a wee thing. He let them have their way. He let them have a king. And you read about the kings. You see how God took them through the kings. He didn't leave them. But it was never his will for man to be run by another man. He told him, he said, you tell them you give them a king, but they'll be having to put their sons in the army. Their daughters will be slaves. They'll end up having to serve. They'll have to be given their money. They'll have to be given their taxes. He told them, I still, no, we don't care. Just give us a king. Because we want what we want. We want something we can see. We want to make sure there's money in the bank. We, we have a hard time trusting that he's king. What if he removes all that? What if America goes through another depression like the 30s? What if we go through World War III like we've already done one, two, and we've already done through World War I, World War II? What if it really, there's bad things? I don't know. I pray it doesn't, but it might. Is God going to be faithful? He restored order before he sat down. He came brought, he goes, now I'm king. 
And not only I'm king, but I'm going to now make you kings and priests. And you need to go and, and see from the top down. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to wrap this up here. 17 times the, the New Testament refers to Jesus being at the right hand of the throne. Most of those says he was seated. Isn't that interesting? Seated. You know, kings do not and queens do not do a business from standing positions. They do it from a throne. They're seated. And the people come in and they bring their petitions and they do business. They make judgments. That means just to make decisions on behalf of the people. They do it from a seated, seated place. We're not going to do this because we're running around like crazy people. We're going to be seated if you want to make meaningful decisions. If you want to help people, you need to relax and seat, to be seated. You know, I learned this one time. I was at one of my professors at UNT, and he says, don't. He said, I'm just throwing this out there. He said, don't ever go in your child's room and try to do anything meaningful from standing from the door or looking down on them. If you've got something meaningful to say, go sit down beside them and look them eye to eye. And your kids will start learning when mama comes and says, sit down, that they better sit, sit down and listen. It's different than yelling from the door, going, yeah, I told you to clean your room. I know you can't do this. That, no, come in and sit down and say, okay, I'm, I've already told you to clean your room. What's the problem? Now, what what do I need to do now to, what what's consequence needs to happen here so mama doesn't have to become some screaming banshee to get you to do something? Maybe I've trained them to do that. There's something about being seated. It's restful. It's authoritative. Fearful people stand over. Democrats stand over. Uh, Democrats, Lord Jesus. No, I didn't mean that. Dictators stand over. No, God is reminding us to be seated. He's showing the order. And I don't want to say this about God's kingdom is not a democracy like America. There's not Democrats and Republicans in this thing. It's not people voting. That's a democracy. And if it, and it's not a it's not a monarchy. Like I just said, he never did want people to have a king. It was always supposed to be a theocracy. It was supposed to be from the head down. It's supposed to be spiritual. God and then he had his elders. He had his people, and he'd sit them over them to pastor them, shepherd them. He told Moses, set people over 100, set people over 50, just for one reason. Not to try to control them, but to serve them. But man made it a monarchy in the beginning. And monarchy is real close to dictator, because if you don't watch it, you take control. America was blessed because we didn't have a monarchy, and we didn't have a democracy. We broke off of them, but we've had a democracy where it's been the people up. And that works in the natural, but from the spiritual, it does not work that way. That's why you have so many church problems when they have people voting, like, all the members come, let's vote on this new pastor. And it's like one thing after another. It was never to be a democracy. This thing was always supposed to be from the top down. It is a theocracy. And when you know that, you can be seated, you're already seated with him to make decisions. And back then when they used a sim seating, this is something I learned, it was really interesting, uh, it said it was symbolic back in the day that this was the Bible's written and back in ancient cultures. Uh, and when you understand this, it becomes more doctrinally and cult culturally meaningful. He said, not as all societies are chair sitting cultures, sitting on a chair as opposed to sitting on the ground or a stool used by a worker meant you were important if you had a chair. The chief role of furniture was to signify status. The chair represented nobility both in practice and in communication. It implied both kingly and divine. Enthronement was used as symbols of power and exaltation. This is one reason why he said that the priests at the time, he said they were, um, he said, you do things to be seen of men. You wear these garments with tassels on them. He said, you love the place of honor, to sit at the place of honor in banquets and with the most important seats in the synagogue. They wanted the most important seats 
in the synagogue. You see, back then, churches didn't have pews. They didn't have benches. They didn't have chairs. People come in and sit on the ground for years. These cathedrals, you go and look in these other countries. It's, it's hundreds of years old. They didn't have seats. That was year, later, later on they had seats. But back then, when this was being written, the, these, if you had a seat, it, it implied you were in a place of authority. You were in a place of importance. This is why the mother of the sons of Zebedee come and said, uh, uh, Jesus, can my son sit on your right or left hand? The seated business. Uh, another place he said, why do you judge your brother? Don't you know we'll stand before the judgment or the decision seat of Christ? He's seated making decisions on our behalf. I want to say this. There's one place I find. Well, actually, I just told you two places. First of all, uh, he's, John, uh, John the Revelator saw Christ standing as a lamb. He was standing before he went and sat on the throne. He stood there and they bowed and he was on the throne. But let me find, tell you another place here. Wow. This is the story of Acts 7. I'll start at 55. It's, it's a whole message that Stephen is preaching. He said, but he, Stephen, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked steadfast in heaven, saw the glory of God and Jesus standing Wow. All those other places he was sitting. He saw him standing on the right hand of God. And he said, behold, I see the heavens opened and the son of man standing on the right hand of God. Stephen was being stoned to death, which is one of the most cruel forms of death. Somebody that was there to record this, who saw what he saw, that they looked up. He saw Jesus standing. Honey, you want to get Jesus on his feet. Let one of his kids be hurt. Just like you. He stands for attention. I asked Gary, why do we stand? Gary goes, how do you say it? He said, we stand um, for respect and honor. He goes, you salute the fly, you stand. You stand when a lady's leaving the table. I had somebody do this the other day. I was like, why are you standing? He goes, well, I was taught to stand up when, when the lady left, got up, stood up. It's, it's, it's respect, it's honor. It's standing to attention. When Brother Art took his last breath, I mentioned and somebody caught this. We thought he was gone. They said, he's gone. You know, he's gone. There's no heartbeat. And all of a sudden, we, <gasps> he's put his shoulders back. And, that, and that was the end. And he was a soldier. Somebody goes, well, he saw Jesus. He's, he's reared those shoulders back. He stood to attention. I want to tell you today, Jesus ain't missing anything. If you feel like that America's going to hell in a handbasket, somehow somebody's running stuff, oh, I know, men, even wicked men rule, the people suffer. That's why I said pray for those in authority that you have a quiet and peaceful life. I wish people would do more praying than they would be talking. We might have a peaceful life. But you know what? In the middle of that, God's still on the throne. When it comes to you, it comes to me. He stands to attention. He stands. He's not missing anything. I want you to know God's not missing what's happening in America. He's not what's happening with me today with COVID. He's not missing what's happening to my daughter that I'm not there to help her through her surgery. He's not, the, he, he's, he's, he's not missing anything. He's been giving us line up on line. He told us what was going to happen. He told why it was going to happen. And now he's telling us what to do about it. If you look higher, if you get your attention on him and fight the good fight of faith, which means it's not what you see. That means you can't see. If you're walking by faith and not by sight, if you don't have sight, it means it's dark or you're blind or you can't see. Remember, that sounds ungodly. No, it's the truth. I don't know what's going to happen. But I know I can look at him. And if I can rise above it, and that's what I'm fighting to do, and I'm encouraging you to look back and see what God's been training us. He didn't miss anything. He's not missing it. He's standing, and he wants you to know. He wants you to rise and shake the dust off of you. And then go see, seated. The Christ in that heavenly place, that realm that's above our minds. Quiet your spirit. Just talk to him. Listen to him. Lay on your face. Get in a position of worship. Cast your crowns before him. And let him rise, raise you up and tell you what your next step is. I love you guys. Can't wait to see you again. 
still got some time on this COVID thing and Gary's going to be in quarantine, but we love you. Uh, I hope you will be tuning in and send us your prayer requests. We love you. We're thankful that we have you uh, that's online, that's watching us, not only at the part of our church body, but you're always welcome to come to Christian Gather. And we've been starting our services at 10 o'clock on our faces. And at 1030, we go live with our messages. It's just something different. But I'm telling you what, God is raising us up. And he wants you to remember who you are, your kings and priests, because the lamb is slain before the foundation of the earth. He already had a plan. He's not missing anything. I miss you, though. Bye.